What's up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today we have a review of Sepidus and their new album Phantom Indigo via Willow Tip Records. <laughs> And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. Sepidus is a Philadelphia and New York extreme metal trio featuring members of Piron, Weeping Sores, Glorious Depravity, and more, including maniacal vocalist and frequent podcast guest Doug Moore. And also perhaps most recommended to fans of the dissonant and chaotic music of bands like Ad Nauseam, Alterage, and Portal. Phantom Indigo is the follow-up to 2016's Man Does Not Give, which was one of my favorite albums of that year. But it seems that Sepidus are really pushing the envelope further than ever with this one. Okay, so this album is not for the novice listener. It is a noisy, violent cacophony that even gives the members work as Piron a run for its money. What you just heard was the sound of the learned response transitioning from its initial doomy build into a violent, chaotic storm of blast beats. It's a rusty, struggling mess of dissonant guitars and technical drumming. And just when it starts to seem to settle into something, the composition opens up into a mind-bending psychedelic guitar solo from Artificial Brain's Dan Gargiulo. As crazy as this can sound, it all makes perfect sense within the context of its conceptual foundations. Phantom Indigo is inspired by the book Hallucinations by neurologist Oliver Sacks, who you may know best from the Robin Williams and Robert De Niro film Awakenings that was based on his memoir of the same name. Have you done? No, you have not. I have, I have, I'm grotesque. You are not. It's not true, and I won't listen to you talk I'm like this. I'm grotesque, I am. I'm not crying. You're crying. As summarized by Sepulus founder Steven Schwegler, Phantom Indigo is a window into the kind of mental loops that can occur from repeated fixation, meaningless daily routine, and negative mental thought patterns. The thoughts themselves are phantoms, and the spectrum of feelings are a color that cannot concisely be expressed. But it seemed to me that no two people agreed as to what Indigo was like, and I decided I wanted to see Indigo. So I built a sort of pharmacological launch pad. <laughs> when I felt ready, I said, I want to see Indigo now, a, a trembling pear-shaped blob of a most wonderful color appeared on the wall. I felt it was numinous as well as luminous. And although I'm an old Jewish atheist, I thought, this is the color of heaven. As a mental health clinician and general music lover, I am always fascinated with how bands convey such heady psychological concepts through sound. It's the perfect album for those like myself who love to find their own interpretations in music based on what they are currently going through, but also sit and wonder what depths the artist was mining to evoke such deranged dissonance. <laughs> Take the title track, for instance, with its menacing blackened tremolo erupting into yet another deluge of seemingly freeform chaos. A veritable Rorschach test of noise. One that only further spirals into madness over time. And once you've finally resigned yourself to the learned helplessness of its inescapable collapse, this is fine. It suddenly kicks up into a rare instance of what one might actually call a hook. Like that rare oasis of sobering understanding and perceived order amidst the waves of mania, fugue, or psychosis.
But as can often be the case with severe mental illness, this moment of clarity derails once more pretty quickly into portal-esque contortions and a highly eerie ambient closer, as if to signal being completely adrift in a catatonic state of numbness. Personally, though, I am partial to the track's tautology and the forgetting curve. The former is a big, lumbering, bassy groove machine named for the needless repetition of an idea, which for me, this inkblot brings to mind the current state of social media culture. This track just also happens to be a little bit more melody-focused with more great layered vocals, as always, from Doug. The Forgetting Curve, on the other hand, is the name for how information is lost over time when there is no attempt to retain it, which instantly had me reflecting on the general malaise of quarantine living. Perhaps appropriately, this is the shortest track on the album, a largely instrumental slog through the toxic sludge of a rapidly deteriorating hippocampus. Where are the toxins? <laughs> Are you listening, you stupid little garbage person? We're what got removed! In the end, these six monolithic tracks deliver on a seriously dense and highly challenging listening experience that is most certainly not for everyone. To quote Feiner, You get a lot of albums like these. You're not going to get it. You're not going to enjoy it, and you're going to have such a bad time that you'll probably walk away thinking there's no way you'll ever enjoy it. Even for me, someone who loves albums like that these days, this was a tough one for me. But I do think that the overarching concept and the highly interpretable nature of these compositions makes for a kind of Lynchian experience. One that can be quite rewarding in what you find in its mirror's reflection. Furthermore, as always, there is no question as to the talent of these musicians. The drumming is insane, the guitar work maniacal, and of course Doug's vocals utterly inhuman. As for my scales, I give Phantom Indigo an 8 for enjoyability. This is always the hardest area to score for an album like this. It's definitely not a fun listen, but it is still engaging on an artistic level. I give it a 9 for musicianship. Again, these guys know how to play their instruments and write challenging gauntlets of dissonant deconstruction. And I give it an 8 for innovation. Not the most unique thing I've heard this year, but definitely pushing for something beyond the status quo. So an 8.3 overall and a B for Sepidus and Phantom Indigo. Get it once more via Willow Tip Records. And y'all, like I said, I've actually had Doug on the podcast twice at this point. Once to talk about Piron and another to talk about Weeping Sores. And he is always one of my favorite guests. He will just talk and talk as long as you let him and always about interesting things. So I highly suggest checking out those podcast episodes. But other than that, just stick around in general because I got plenty more reviews, tier lists, other interviews coming up right after this one. So subscribe if you have not already. Hit the like button, comment, let me know what you thought of this album and also chat with us on the discord and support on patreon but that'll do it for now flight of icarus signing off i will see you in the trenches